Hello, welcome to the Horticulturalists. I am Matthew Lucas. And I am Stephen Ryan. You are indeed. And we post every week on a Friday, so do hit subscribe if you want to follow our continuing horticultural adventures. And Stephen... And don't forget that we do shorts every week as well. So if you've got a question that you'd like to ask me, pop it down into the comments and we'll try and answer it in 60 seconds. Ta-da! But where are we today? What is going on, Stephen? Well, it's just before Christmas. So I thought, Christmas special, what sort of group of plants can we engage with to have a festive feel to our video this week? And what are they? Holly, of course. Ta-da! Yes, Ow, Holly. I literally just... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes right they right bite. Up. Yeah, so we thought we'd talk about a few interesting hollies because they are one of the classical festive plants, both in Europe, North America, and believe it or not, even down here in Australia where our Christmases are generally in the heat of summer mm. and holly has no real connection here, we seem to have adopted it. And so even here, holly is seen as a festive plant. And I will say, we are filming this in December and it's not exactly balmy hot, is it? No, but by Christmas, you know, we'll be ready for those prawns on the barbecue or whatever else. There we go. All right, well, let's go and take a closer look at this particular holly that's right behind us. What a good idea. And we are doing a wonderful Christmas special in the equally wonderful Durrell Garden here on Mount Macedon. So many thanks to the very generous owners of this private garden who have let us jingle our bells <laughs> yes. this Christmas season. But Stephen, Holly, yes. overview. All Tell right. us everything. Well, the classical Christmas holly, of course, is Ilex aquifolium, which yep. is a species that grows in Europe, including England, and has because of its evergreenness, becomes something of a trademark for winter, mm. which was then adopted by the early Christians, uh, and so it became sort of a Christmassy plant. But in fact, it was sacred to the Druids and everybody else prior to then. And it is just one species of a quite large genus. Yes. So the genus itself consists of around about 570 odd species. Okay. They're not all evergreen. I was gonna say, are they all evergreen? Are no. they all prickly? No, they're not all prickly. There are many hollies that have no prickliness whatsoever, mm. and there are certainly many that drop their, their foliage. They do have one or two characteristics in common. Mm. They all have tiny little white flowers on them, yes. and they all have boy and girl forms. Right. Now, so, uh, so separate boy and girl, or boy and girl flowers on the same plant? No, separate boy and girl plants. So you, if you want the berries on a holly, you need to get a female plant, and it needs to have a male holly of basically the same species, not too terribly far away, so that um, the insects can work their wonders, and it will produce the berries. I did not know that. So there you go. There you go, learning something every day now, as a horticulturalist. The other thing that you need to be aware of, mm. although holly is not a native to Australia, um, they have been planted here quite a lot, mm. right from early days, because mm. people wanted to bring things from the home country out here to grow. Yeah. And they've also become weedy here. Mm. So holly has become quite a weedy species in Australia, uh, particularly in the cooler climates. And I was gonna say, here on Mount Macedon, I know a lot of the gardens here that we filmed in struggle with weedy holly yes exactly so if you did want to still plant holly uh, because you like the foliage mm. the obvious thing to do is to avoid female hollies which means you won't get any berries of course but if you plant only male hollies uh, they can't produce seeds so therefore they can't reproduce and therefore you won't have as much trouble with it's hollies like coming up everywhere a monastic settlement of holly but then you don't get the berries and what's the point well, some of them do have a very attractive foliage. Which and brings course, us cunningly to this one. Yeah. You know my passion about variegated plants. Yes, Stephen yes. Ryan. yes. This yes. Is Matthew prickly, loves variegated plants. Prickly and variegated. Exactly. And it makes wonderful Christmas wreaths for around the door. It's already curved. Yes, <laughs> it is in fact, because this is actually a weeping holly. Yes, look at look at this. This is like something from Sleepy Hollow. It's so gothic. Yeah, it? it is. And it started off life as a variegated weeping holly, mm. but it has quite a lot of the tree has reverted back to green, mm. as is often the case with variegates. Yeah. Uh, and of course, it wasn't jumped on quickly enough. So mm. now enough of the tree has gone green that it is not worth trying to bring it back to its fully variegated form. But that's a thing to bear in mind with all variegated, well, particularly trees and shrubs, yep. is to, to trim out anything that's reverting. Yep. But let's just take a minute to admire the form of this. So 
Would it have been um, grafted? Yes, it would have started off life as a small graft on the top of a normal upright European holly. Yeah. And again, it's one of those plants, it's a bit of a signature plant around Mount Macedon. Nearly all of the big old gardens up here have a weeping holly somewhere. Really? I've never seen one before. Yeah, well, I can take you to other gardens and show you more <laughs> if you're really keen. No. And there's three forms of it that occasionally show up in Australia. Mm. There's a straight green form of weeping holly, which mm. is Ilex aquifolia pendula. Mm -hmm. Then there is this golden weeping form, which is Ilex aquifolia pendula aurea. Yeah. And then there's a silver edged one, which is Ilex aquifolia pendula Elbow marginata. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get there eventually. They're all descriptives, really. Uh, you know, aurea means it's gold variegated. Elbow means it's white variegated. Mm. Elbow marginata means that it's white variegated around the edges. You can watch our Latin special to learn more <laughs> yes. about botanic so, nomenclature. This is a female form. In fact, all of the forms of weeping holly that seem to be out in the trade are, in fact, female forms. Mm. So it does produce berries. Unfortunately, of course, in Australia, Christmas falls in the middle of summer. Mm. So although we've got holly, we don't have red berries at no. this time of the year. No. So our hollies tend to produce their berries at the appropriate time of the year, which is midwinter. Mm. But that's not when Christmas is in the Southern Hemisphere. So they're not quite as useful at Christmas time as they might be <laughs> otherwise. But this garden was first planted in the 1870s and there are many more hollies here. So yep. should we go and look at a few more that caught your eye? I think we should because I think it's a very diverse and interesting group. But what we're going to be looking at today are all forms of the same species. So they're all forms oh. of Ilex aquifolium. So we're not engaging with the genus as a whole, unfortunately, although mm. we may look at some others later. Mm. But what we're actually doing is looking at some of the different and interesting forms of the European holly. There you go. So we're going to say goodbye to our weeping friends and hello to something else. Yes, exactly. Holly too. Yes, well, I have to say, I think... <laughs> you're going to learn one day. Oh, <laughs> man, they are prickly. Yes, they are indeed. This one, I think, is particularly festive because yep. I do like that sort of silvery-edged effect. Yep. Uh, and, of course, when it gets its red berries on, it's going to look lovely in midwinter, mm. which doesn't work for our Christmas. But anyhow, and this one is... He called Ilex aquifolium argentea marginata. Right. So uh, she is a girl because she gets berries. Yeah. And it has a lovely silvery edge to the leaf. Mm. And this plant is four metres tall or more. So it's quite a large specimen. And the interesting thing with hollies, when they get up to a certain height, they become less prickly. Mm. Oh. So when they're young plants, they're quite prickly. As they get taller and taller, they go less prickly. So is this an evolutionary protective yes. measure to stop browsers eating deer. the foliage? Deer. Deer mainly. Uh -huh. So once they get up taller than a deer, they do tend then to get less and less to prickly. Wow. And if you take cuttings off them and grow them as a young plant, they mm. tend to revert back to the prickly form mm. whilst they're low. So they seem to know how tall off the ground oh. they are. So I find that a rather intriguing mm. adaptation when it comes to holly. Now, with this particular species then, and all these varieties that we're looking at, some basic rules. Now, the weeping one is in full sun. Yeah. This one is now in the shade of some oak trees. What are their ideal conditions? Are they an understory plant in the wild? In the wild, they do tend to be in the middle of forests. So they are understory plants. Yeah. Uh, so they'll grow in the middle of the beech forests or the oak forests or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so they're very shade tolerant, mm. but they don't grow as dense and bushy in the shade as what they will if they're out in a more sunny aspect. Will the leaves get burnt or damaged if they're in full sun? <sighs> If we get one of our really, really awful Australian summers, we might get a little bit of damage on the foliage, but yeah. they're surprisingly heat tolerant for a plant that comes from Northern Europe. And this one is beautiful, and I can, I've never really thought about holly, but you can see how useful this is. It's quite upright, it's yep. got a lovely habit, and the foliage is beautiful. And I can imagine when it's covered in scarlet berries, it will look amazing. Yeah, all winter long. Mm. And of course, the other thing to think about with holly, of course, is that uh, it's very prunable, so you can make it the shape you want. Mm. And of course, as long as you're patient, because it's not the world's fastest growing of trees, yeah. it can make an exceedingly good hedge. And I have to say, the, the hedge of holly is a very good deterrent for all sorts of things you don't want in your garden. True. All right, well, things we do want is to see another holly. So should we go and find that one? Yeah, I've got another really interesting one just down the path. Okay.
Now, believe it or not, Matthew, my point has been illustrated. Here I have an enormous old holly tree above me, a male plant because it's got no fruit on it, so it's had flowers but no berries. And this is the old foliage which is well above the height of your average deer, and it's virtually completely thornless, so it's just got a, a quite smooth margin around the edge of it. And if you look closely in behind, there are some shoots coming up from where a branch has been pruned, which would be at deer height, and they're covered in prickles. So there you go. What a wonderful adaptation to the wild that this plant has. Next holly off the rank. <laughs> well, this one is oh. for the um, collector who likes the macabre in the holly <laughs> family. This looks vicious. Look yeah. at those leaves. Well, it's commonly known as the hedgehog holly yeah. for obvious reasons. So it's Ilex aquifolium ferox, mm. as in ferocious, oh. as in spiky. Yeah. Argentia, which means silvery, so hence Argentia, as in argent. It is a remarkably different holly. It's a male, so it won't mm. produce any fruit, mm. but it could be used as a cross-pollinator for female hollies if you're looking for one. Mm. And it has this remarkable prickly upper surface of the leaf, uh, grows into quite a large plant. Yeah, it's for the variegated spiky leaf devotees out there. That's not me, yeah, just saying. But it is a really interesting and different plant, and yeah. it seems to keep its prickliness even as a big tree, which mm. is not the way most hollies tend to work. Yeah. So the hedgehog holly is certainly a different one. Now, it's quite curious. There are a lot of hollies in this garden. Is that unusual, a garden uh, of this era? No, it's not, actually. It's one of those things that was, of the era, very, very... Um, grist for the mill, I suppose you'd call it. Uh, people would plant hollies because they were evergreen, mm. they were familiar with them, mm. uh, they were good for hedging, uh, they were good for screening, mm. uh, and um, yeah, they were a very popular plant. And as we can see by that other specimen tree we were showing with the, the leaves that aren't prickly, it's actually a very handsome form. They can make actually a really beautiful tree, but mm. they can take 80 or 100 <laughs> years to do it. So you're not probably Let's going to be planting with that in mind. Hold breath. Now, you did mention there are some holly look-alikes, some ersatz holly. Should we go and look at those? Yeah, why not? Let's have a look at a few plants that pretend to be hollies. Faking it till they make it. Yep. When is a holly not a holly, Stephen Ryan? Well, sometimes when it's an osmanthus <laughs> instead. So we have here an osmanthus and to the uninitiated, Me. a holly. It's prickly, yes. the leaves look the same. Yes, we've got the piece of hedgehog holly still with us and it could disappear into this plant. Yeah. Now, the osmanthuses don't get showy berries like hollies, so mm. that could be one way you could tell. But of course, not all hollies get fruit because there's boy and girl ones. So mm. how do you tell the difference between an osmanthus and a holly when neither are in flower and fruit? Tell us, Stephen Ryan. It's very straightforward and simple. An osmanthus has leaves that are opposite and they alternate up the stem. Oh yes! So they're opposite on the stem, mm. but the next set of leaves face a different way and it works its way up the stem like that. A holly, on the other hand, its leaves tend to be more or less in one plane and they alternate up the stem. So if you look at that closely, you can see they, they alternate from one to the next, to the next, to the next. So they're not opposite. So it's alternate and the osmanthuses are opposite. Well, there you go. Yeah. That is fascinating. And I might add, of course, osmanthuses have different uses in the garden. They don't get fruit like the hollies do. Yeah. They don't become weedy like the hollies can. Mm. But when they are in flower, their tiny little white flowers have an exquisite perfume. Very fragrant, yeah. yes, yes. So definitely worthwhile growing. And we have a green version of osmanthus heterophyllus, as the variegated one is here as well and if you look at that closely you can see that the leaves are opposite each other yeah. on the stem mm. and they work their way up the stem in opposite directions so yeah. uh, it's very classical osmanthus that's mm. how they sit their foliage excellent so there well you, you can see how easily holly will germinate around in some of our old gardens up here and you can understand why it's considered to be rather a weedy species so, so you do have to plant them with discretion so be aware Rounding out our Holly Christmas special, Stephen. Yes, well, I'm not quite sure what the cultivar name for this one is, but yes. it's virtually a gold-leafed version. So it could be Oreo marginatum or something similar, but it has a really pretty gold-edged leaf 
uh, with nice big thorns along the sides. And it's obviously a female form because it's producing berries on it. Yes. So it's probably the parent of some of those nasty little green ones that are coming up all around the garden. And another beautiful habit. Well, yep. they are in context, a very beautiful specimen tree. They are. Well, thank you so much. If Christmas is your thing, happy Christmas. And if it's not, have a happy holiday. Yes, We exactly. look forward to whatever the new year might bring, Stephen Ryan. Well, lots more interesting plants, I hope. Yes. So we do post every Friday. Hit subscribe if you want to know what our continuing adventure might be. And we look forward very much to seeing you next week. Bye all.